Huh? Oh, what? You're here for the intro? Now? Sorry, it's good to see you. It's just not a great time. I've, uh, I've got some guests around at the moment. But okay, seeing as you're here, we might as well get started. Today, we've got to make some serious progress on this deep, dark village project. That includes expanding the cave, building the first few houses, and making an impressive entrance hall. Once we have our first villagers, we can also start exploring more of the Dragon Egg's magical properties. Ow! But the Dragon Egg isn't the only surprisingly powerful thing we're going to talk about today, because this episode is all about scale. As we put together our cave builds, we'll go over how to pick, use, and combine different build scales to enhance player experience, create mind-bending optical illusions, and tackle big problems with small solutions. And, uh, speaking of big problems, I think I should start by solving this one. Whew. Okay. Let's do this. probably wondering what's up with all the zombies. Well, I don't know anything for sure, but I have a sneaking suspicion our upstairs neighbor Edie might be behind it all. I don't think he was too pleased about what happened to his wall. <laughs> well, what did he expect? If you don't pay your contractors, don't be surprised if they have a returns policy. But let's not jump to any conclusions. All Edie's been doing in this area lately is AFKing for wool in his little cave back here. For all we know, this pit under the spawner generated naturally, and these channels might just be a new semi-waterlogged cave type, and it wouldn't be mighty neighborly of me to accuse Edie of wrongdoing just because there happens to be some cool caves near his AFK spot. Especially since it turns out he left me this slime block as a housewarming gift. Such a nice gesture. So instead of pranking him back, let's be a good neighbor and help him out instead. Now one thing he seems to be really bad at is lighting up his stuff. We can definitely help him out with that. Uh, yeah, see, there's a problem. He's using the wrong torches. Much better. Okay, now that we've dealt with a few local pests, it's time to start making some serious progress here in our cave village. The deadline for this server's village upgrade competition is only a few months away, and we've got a lot of work to do. Our search for inspiration led us to a build theme that will guide how we shape and style this cavern. But before we can start, we still need to pick the right scale. From what I can see, a lot of players seem to pick a favorite scale and use it for everything. Even the more adventurous builders seem to only play around with new scales as they take on new projects. But using scale in this way is a bit like buying a car simply because you want to listen to the radio. That's definitely one of the jobs it does well, but you're missing out on its true potential. Today, I'm going to take you for a joyride so you can see for yourself just how powerful a tool scale can be. Along the way, we'll use what we learned to help us make mountains out of molehills, create perplexing perspectives, and just like our dragon egg here, help us reshape the very fabric of 3D space. Let's head over to my creative world so we can get started. Alright, so if scale defines how big or small an object is compared to normal, then we should probably start by working out what's normal. Well, the perfect size for a building is defined by a delicate balance. Buildings need to be big enough to accommodate the hitbox of its inhabitants, and small enough to make it easy to gather materials and assemble it. But in most cases, the only building materials, appliances, and furnishings available are mass-produced. That means, just like in Minecraft, architects and engineers typically have to choose from a predetermined list of materials. The materials on planet Earth's block lists are all perfectly designed to fit into the world's infrastructure, and by a happy coincidence, they also perfectly match the hitbox of someone called Normal. The dimensions of Normal's hitbox don't match those of any real players, or even the measurements one might consider common, typical, or average. Normal is just an imaginary person whose needs and desires are easy to cater to in a world with flawed infrastructure and a limited block list. But if it's harder to build things bigger or smaller than normal, how come people still do it? All the time! 
customizing the size of a build can significantly improve the quality of life for the occupant. And as you play around with this balance, larger scales improve a build's adaptability, while smaller scales require less space and fewer resources. But beyond all that, just as your choice of font can affect the meaning of words, your choice of scale has the power to drastically change the way a build is interpreted by its admirers. Smaller scales can help amplify a build's mood or character, making comforting cottages even cozier and creepy cabins even more claustrophobic. On the other hand, large scales can be used to overwhelm onlookers and inhabitants, making them feel like ants in an amphitheater, small and insignificant in the presence of powerful idols and revered paradigms. But to unlock the bundle of benefits that come with variations in scale, they need to be just that, variations. And the best way to do that is not to pick one build scale, but pair two together. So, now that we understand scale a little bit better, let's head back to the cave and work out how to apply that information to our village project. My plan is to base each one of the villagers' houses on a different ancient city structure, only our village won't be ravaged by the death and corruption that plagues its overworld counterparts. But I don't just want this place to look like a deep dark dimension, I want it to feel like one too. By draining the nearby aquifers, knocking out some walls, and shaving back a few awkward corners, the judges can enjoy a majestic view of a scaled up cavern adorned with tumultuous rivers, roaring cascades, and a vast skulky sea. Then to make this dark dimension seem even deeper than it really is, we'll juxtapose its magnified measurements by populating it with small-scale buildings, filling our expanded space to the brim with life and story. Let me get to work on supersizing this cavern and installing our first three bite-sized homes, and maybe once that's done, we can check out how that changes the feel of the space. There are a lot to look at, but eventually this place is going to be really dark, so to make sure this place still looks vibrant, we need to crank up the saturation. Hopefully these will look more at home once we start making more progress, but for now, the important thing to note is that our snack size structures are making it much easier to appreciate the sheer size of this expanded cavern. But the next thing on our list of builds today is an entrance chamber, and I've got a pretty cool idea for what I want to do with that. I think it's fair to say that when we got our first glimpse of ancient cities, a lot of us wondered whether the roaring warden head at the city center might secretly be a portal, taking players into a brand new deep dark dimension. Now obviously that theory didn't pan out, but if there's one thing I'm trying to get across to you in this series, it's that when you're armed with the right tools, absolutely nothing can stop you from making your dreams a reality. And if any tool is going to help us recreate the game's largest natural structure in this tiny little cave, it's scale. So it's time to put the pedal to the metal and see just how powerful a tool scale can be through a technique called forced and sp- Oh God, no, stop, stop it. Guys, we can't afford to do that every single time. This is getting ridiculous. <sighs> okay, so back to our creative world. To understand how force perspective works, we need to address perhaps the biggest flaw in the way we perceive the scale of an object. A small object up close looks the same size as a large object far away. Luckily, this is just a hardware issue, and our brains have really good software to compensate. Our internal GPU uses four ways to help us understand the difference between something that's big and something that's close. First off, foreground objects block or occlude our view of the features in the background. This lets us rank objects from closest to furthest away. Next up, the famous banana for scale. If the viewer spots a recognizable feature, they can use its absolute size as a point of reference to size up any unfamiliar objects around it. Then, if we can spot multiple copies of an object, we can use their relative size to calculate how far apart they are. But even if nothing is aligned, nothing is recognizable, and no objects are repeated, the viewer's GPU can still use the subtle distortions of the shape of any objects in the scene to map them onto a detailed 3D grid. In order to cram a whole ancient city into our tiny entrance
entrance chamber, we'll need to use a very small scale. But I don't want our viewers to think its towers and turrets are small and close. I want to fool them into thinking that they're big and far away. Unfortunately, when you look at things this way, it's pretty clear to see that while fooling someone's eyes is easy, fooling the brain is not so simple. So maybe we need to approach this from a different perspective. Imagine for a moment that we don't just control what the viewer sees, but also where they see it from. If that were the case, we could prevent them from making use of new view angles, depth by motion, parallax, or their spatial awareness to better understand the distribution of objects in a scene. And that's how this trick works. If the viewer is forced to look at our build from just one single perspective, we can completely rewrite their understanding of 3D space simply by using a few deceptive shapes and angles. Artists and architects have used forced perspective for millennia. Sometimes the viewer is challenged to find the one perspective that brings order to a chaotic mess of objects. Other times, the effect simply can't be detected on a human scale. But just like us, many designers set out to use forced perspective to make structures and spaces appear much bigger or smaller than they really are. Perhaps most notably, the Imagineers at Disney, who used this trick throughout their theme parks to definitively prove that nothing's impossible for a possible. Okay, this is probably a lot to take in, so for now, how about we just think of forced perspective like this. We've got four friends and four enemies. The more we do to thwart our enemies, the more fun we can have with our friends. So let's begin by heading Heading back to the cave and vanquishing a few enemies. We'll start by focusing on this area back here. We need to make it so that judges can only see it from one small part of our entrance chamber. Shackling our judges in place is not gonna get me a lot of votes, so let's work out a few ways to force the perspective of any viewers that prefer to be a little more free range. We can block certain sight lines with terrain features or conveniently place decorations. We could use obstacles and game mechanics to limit their freedom of movement. We can add paths or hazards to make certain perspectives more appealing than others, or use the threshold effect to trigger a full memory reset of the viewer's GPU, thus preventing them from spotting any inconsistencies. I should also mention that the number one defense against all four enemies is distance. The further the viewer gets from your build, the harder it'll be for them to benefit from changes in perspective. Alright, so now that we've forced the viewer's perspective, let's see what our friends can do to help us warp and stretch this space using scale. To start, I'll push this area further into the background of our judge's field of view, by occluding it with a series of columns. Next, if I include scaled replicas of familiar features like this tall ruin and these watchtowers, I can influence the way the viewer calculates the size and depth of any unfamiliar objects in the scene. Now, to smooth out the transition of scale throughout the space, I'm gonna use a few repeated objects and features. And finally, I'm gonna distort all of the lines that make up our build and make them converge toward a false vanishing point. This is sort of like hacking into the player's FOV settings to make it seem like like the space extends much further into the horizon. And there it is, a whole city crammed into a couple dozen blocks. Now I'm just going to repeat these steps a few more times to fill in the rest of the space. You know, I always find it a little worrying how often I end up fooling myself with my own illusions. <laughs> but yeah, I think this place is all done. My goal over here was to show that the city extends really far back, making it seem impossible that the cave can open up right away like this as you step through the portal. Hopefully that helps sell the effect that this frame is a functioning interdimensional gateway that- Oh! Uh, I don't think we can ignore it anymore. One of those zombies must have bitten me, because ever since then I've been feeling kind of- Oh god, let's see. Does this guy have like a health potion or something I could use? Uh, oh, okay. Well, that's interesting. No idea what that writing means, but it can't exactly make things worse. <laughs> All right, bottoms up. Did it work? Uh, what? Okay, one problem at a time. Let's see if the farmer can help us make a golden apple or something. Oh, hey, and they've got one of those weird writing things too. In for a penny, I guess. And it's not like anyone's ever been betrayed by a cake. All right, moment of truth. Uh, well, nothing seems to be- Ow, jeez, that's not a great sensation, but hey, I'm the right size again. Okay, <sighs> well, now I just need to- Ow, wait, that's- that's enough! Ah, uh, no, 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 no! Ah, uh, great. So I guess that cake was just a lie? Oh, wait, that gives me an idea. Dragon Egg, get me out of this cave! <sighs> okay, uh, take me to my base. I said, take me to my base. Ah, uh, is it out of rockets already? All right, well, I guess with these big legs, I could just walk home from here. 
Not that I know where I am. I mean, that definitely doesn't look familiar, but I guess we should follow the signs of civilization. I wonder who made this thing. I need to snoop around everyone's bases more often. <laughs> hmm, I guess we're taking the scenic route over the mountain? Uh, today is just not my lucky day. <gasps> Whoa, who made all of this? How have I never seen any of this before? This is huge! <gasps> Hello? Anybody there? Soga? Is that you? <laughs> uh, I could really use a friend right about now. Whew. Okay, take a deep breath. Everything's gonna be fine. I mean, sure, I'm monstrously oversized, completely lost, and uh, slowly zombifying, but no need to dwell on the negative. It's a beautiful day. I'm in a gorgeous city, and besides, I'm not exactly a stranger to living in a large-scale environment. After all, I live in, in Canada, Canada. A country so a long country. that it could bridge the Atlantic, so wide it could connect what? Rome to the North Pole, what? and tall enough to host the world's tallest cliffs. Hey, that's my line. <gasps> Wait, hold up, I know you. You're the guy that makes all those pretty skyscrapers. Alpine, right? Uh, yeah, that's me. Wait, then this isn't the Meerkat's world. I must have jumped all the way to a different planet. No wonder this thing's out of juice. Sorry, did you say there's a whole planet of just Meerkats? Of course, three if you include Mars. Huh? Wow, I can't believe I'm talking to the Alpine. I have so many questions. Oh, okay, uh, what do you want to know? Uh, where do we even start? Um, who's your favorite architect? Are these the buildings from your videos? What's your favorite tidbit? Uh... No, wait, 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 wait. Hold up a second. How are you so big? Oh, just the dragon egg, you know. Oh, yeah, same. Kind of by accident, though. I don't suppose you know how to shrink us back down? Well, it's actually pretty easy. Like this. this place? It's incredible. Oh, thanks. This is Andea. Oh my gosh, everything just looks so amazing. And all these details. Oh. Do you want me to show you around? Um, yes, please. Just to double check, we are normal size again, right? Like, these buildings are all a one-to-one -one scale. Yeah, so a lot of this stuff is closer to a 1 to 1 scale on the ground level, uh, but it typically tends to be more of a 1.5 to 1 scale as you go up. Oh wow, well down at ground level it all works together really well. What's the purpose for using the bigger scale further up? When you do build it to a larger scale, you can add these extra window sills. Uh, so it's, it's just a bit of extra detail for your build. Oh neat, so are the interiors scaled up as well or? We use the ceiling heights of four and then we use one block for the ceiling and one block between floors. Oh, that's so smart. Do you do that for all your buildings or do you ever mix it up? So not all the buildings are built at the exact same scale. Some of them do have five tall ceilings. I'm not sure if you have this one rendered in over there. So not the curvy one, but the one right behind it. The ceilings are five tall and there's only one block in between each floor. And then on the ceiling, there's a trap door that's upside down. So that way we can fit more space with actual, you know, less floor height uh, to give us uh, a lot more room to work with vertically. So wait, how many of these actually have interiors then? A lot of the buildings here, the first floors are furnished with either shops or amenities or, you know, sort of any public space. Uh, but a lot of the upper floors are empty uh, because some players have had issues with lag in the past uh, because the texture pack can be pretty heavy for some. <laughs> yeah, this, this is a lot to process. Ooh, well, I recognize this one. Uh, this one here, this one is actually fully furnished because I did make this one for a video. Yeah, 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 I saw that. Oh, it's so weird seeing it in person though. Uh, this is an office tower sort of inspired by a cave here on the first floor. Ooh, look at that view. Oh, it's so good. Oh, and you've even got all the right cranes and AC units and green roofs. I really like to decorate the top of my builds because uh, uh, so if you decorate the top of your builds, especially with your HVAC equipment and solar panels, then it makes it a lot more interesting for people to explore. So from what I've seen in your videos, every building tends to be shaped around its purpose, right? So how does that affect the scale you choose? Yeah, so typically I like to vary the first floor height. Uh, so it depends on what the use is. Uh, this one here, the scale is very, very large. So if you come in the door here, here. With this one, I think I might make it into a restaurant. And since the scale is so big, I could make a loft or have like a staircase that goes up. Ooh, I can't wait to see how that turns out. I guess I'll have to keep following your channel. Okay, so you got some big buildings. What would you say is your smallest building around here? 
I have a little car mechanic shop over here. I, I wanted to have a bit of a contrast towards like the big skyscrapers. Sometimes you will see that in big cities where it's just like really tall towers and then it jumps right down to something like this. I stole somebody's car. I don't know whose it is. Oh, please. You have no idea how many ideas I'm planning to steal from this place. <laughs> Man, I'm just trying to work out how many deserts worth of sand is sitting in some of these towers. Yeah, so because it's in creative, we don't have any material constraints. So we can build as big, as tall, or as far underground as we want to, I guess. Fair enough. But even still, this is a lot of blocks for just one person to place down. Well, it wasn't just one person. We do have some specialists, helpers, and curators here on Cube uh, helping me out. Okay, so if, hypothetically speaking, someone was interested in contributing to this place, how might they go about doing that? Yeah, so if you go to cubed.community, uh, there's an application form. By default, you're a visitor, but uh, you can apply for builder ranks. Ooh, okay. I might just look into that. Maybe there's something you're missing that I could contribute? Huh? Sorry, I, uh, I left my wallet in the other dimension. I'm just gonna... All right, well, clearly you've already got a subway. I've got a subway system myself, but uh, I got to say, this is a bit of an upgrade. Yeah, n nice big car sizes, lots of seating in here. Yeah. Bring you wherever you want to go. Um, I could help you expand the rest of your transit network, maybe with some bus stations or something. Okay, maybe not. Uh, how about pedestrians? I could add some overhead walkways or some, oh, never mind. Yeah, we like our uh, skywalks. They're quite frequent around here. Um, already got a good road layout. Jeez, you've already got cargo and freight covered. <laughs> I know that one's meant to be carrying pipe sections, but they definitely look like giant donuts. Yeah, Tim Hortons has a new fleet of trucks to deliver their giant donuts. <gasps> There's a Tim Hortons! <laughs> no, no. <laughs> uh, you're making me think of Tim Hortons. Now I want to go there. <laughs> you got cafes and clubs and... Clubs, restaurants, all that good stuff. Uh, lots yeah. of places to park your bike to if you decide to bike around. I'm guessing there's a story behind that. Uh, do you have a swanky architecture firm? <laughs> this is, oh, this is my architecture firm. Okay. Well, not as much lava as mine, but definitely still swanky. Lots of workspaces. Oh. And then here's my office back here. Welcome. What can I do for you? All right. But you have a cool hipster bar. Yeah. Okay. Nice. But you have a cool hipster bar with sheltered seating and row lights and lots of greenery. Oh, come on. <laughs> What about a harbor? I could definitely help you lay out some dogs, even if it's just for one or two boats. Wow. This place is fully kitted out. We even got biplanes, Ferris wheels, concert venues. Bit of a tight squeeze at the top. Oh, you even have hydrofoils? Are you kidding me? <laughs> yeah, well, you got everything. You know, I must say, my day has not been going great so far. This, yeah, no, uh, look at just, that. you've made my week, my year. <laughs> well, we can get you cleaned up, I'm sure. All right, well, as an engineer, I'm impressed. As a Minecrafter, I'm inspired. And as a builder, I'm blown away. At least this place doesn't have any good examples of forest perspective. Otherwise, I would feel completely outdone. Well, Alpine, today was amazing. I honestly can't thank you enough for this tour. It was exactly what I needed. With the sun starting to burn my skin, and if I don't get back home and fix myself soon, I might end up a zombie forever. Looks like this thing's fully recharged, but I definitely don't have time for many more accidental detours. Do you have any dragon egg tips for a beginner? Well, usually I'd tell you to focus on your mind, but I think until you heal up, it's probably better if you just say your destination out loud. Just make sure to choose your words carefully. Oh, okay. So if I said something clear, like, um, I know, uh, take me where I want to go. Touché. I guess you can't leave any room for interpretation, huh? So I know we're in a rush or whatever, but like, uh, hi, could I get a vanilla dip donut, please? And yeah, yeah, I think that's all. Thank you. Okay, let's see you twist this one. Take the Canadian YouTuber who teaches Minecraft players how to use real-world civil engineering techniques to improve their builds to the Meerkats from Mars Season 1 world. Wait, what? How did that not work? Ugh, just take me to Edie. Coming at you. What, what just oh, happened? Hey, Edie. <laughs> uh, yeah, great, great song. Love the houses. Gotta run. Um, what? No time for questions. Oh, oh, it's it's looking great. Mm. Oh, just chef's kiss. All right, all right, bye. Okay, uh... Okay, Fletcher, you're my last chance. What have you got for me? Oh, you've got to be kidding me. More runes? 
Do we do it? I mean, we're basically out of time, and I don't think we have many more options. Okay, here it goes. Oh wait, did he have weakness arrows? Whew. Well, I'm the right size, I'm in the right world, and the right dimension, and I'm not even a zombie. It's a pretty successful day, if you ask me. What's more, construction of our deep dark village is now well underway with our first three miniature mansions and a perplexing passage to boot. I'm really excited to show you all the other things I've got planned for this cave, and next episode, we can start bringing this place to life. But having only just brought myself back to life, I think I need to take a breather so I can process all of today's chaos and appreciate the fact that for once in this game, it feels like everything's back to normal. Uh, hey Dingy, what were the exact words you used on the egg? And then I bit the golden apple and I healed up and yeah, that's when you showed up. So wait, you're not even a little bit curious as to what the arrows do? Are you kidding me? After what happened with the potion and the cake? Here, we can try it together. Uh, I don't know. Oh, come on. It'll be fun. Okay. I'll count us down. Three, two, one. Uh, uh-oh. What? What happened? Is it bad? 